Okay, so the last part for today is going to be data cleaning. Uh, every time you're working with real world data, you will probably want to uh, rename uh, variable names. You will oftentimes have to recode variable values. Um, and oftentimes you also have to deal with missing values somehow. So luckily the tidyverse provides some um, convenient functions for these tasks. So to start with renaming variables, um, there is a function that also allows us to simply pipe the data as the first input into the function. And then as the input, we basically just provide the new variable names equal the variable name we would like to have replaced and uh, rename just renames the, the variable in that in that data frame or in that tipple. So if we look at the, the data set that we loaded previously, um, the barrel lead data set that contains a lot of um, economic and demographic data from countries around the world, we can see that the variables here are called uh, BL code, LU, LP, LPC, and without the code book, they're not very descriptive, so it's very difficult to find out what they, um, what they actually mean. If we use the structure function to take a look, it looks even worse. Uh, so it's very difficult to find and get, get a good overview of uh, what, what is, how this data actually looks like and what you expect from it. So well, the way to solve this is by using rename and then for example, if we refer to a code book, we will find out that BL code is simply a country code. Um, LU is the percentage in that country who has no schooling. LP is the percentage of people with only primary education. LPC is the percentage of the population with primary education completed and so on. So we can basically, by using uh, the code book, we can just rename um, all of these variables with much more descriptive names. Um, such that now that we, when we use the glimpse function, take a look, we get some idea of um, how the data set actually looks like and what kind of information is contained in there. Um, also, very often uh, you get data that you would like to have recoded. So if, if for example, data is provided as, um, as a character or as a, a string or a factor that you would like to turn into let's say um, numeric values. So it could be, for example, um, here we have uh, sex as a factor, um, female or male, we would like to turn this into a numeric value, zero, one. What we do is we use the function recode and we just say what, um, what value we would like to have uh, recoded, so this will be male, we would like to substitute this with zero, and fem the factor female we would like to substitute with uh, the value one. And now if you take a look at it, you can see that the ver before it used to be um, a factor, and now we have a numeric value since it's only zero or one. Uh, this doesn't make our, uh, any, our, our analysis any different. Uh, so it might be useful to recode it that way. So another example might be, for example, that you have you want to turn the level of schooling into years, and your factors might be, for example, primary school, uh, high school, or um, university. And you might then say, okay, somebody in primary school is five years of schooling, or uh, high school is twelve years of schooling. Um, so this recoding variable is something that you might come across very often. Um, missing values are also often very painful. So the, uh, R is very well able to deal with uh, nicely coded missing, val missing values. Um, this means that if you have missing values in R, they should be coded as NA. So for oftentimes this is not the case if you're downloading data and reading them into R. So you have to find out what, um, for example, if they are coded, if they have a special code, or if they're just empty, and then you replace them with uh, an A. 
And the way to do this in, in the tidyverse, so if, if you use the brackets, you would basically just filter um, according to the code for missing value, which in the wages data set is 99, and then assign this the value an A. Um, in tidyverse, this would be done by using the function NA if. And for example, if we know that it's every observation that has um, schooling 90, value 99 is missing, we just apply NA if with 99 and then pipe the wages schooling data uh, into this function. Um, R also provides a function that uh, identifies missing values if they, if they are correctly coded. Uh, so if you, have, if you know that your missing values are coded as NA, you can simply use the function is NA, it will return true if it is, if it is, uh, if wage is missing in the wages data set, and it will return false if it's not missing. Uh, basically the result will just be um, the wages data set filtered to only give us observations where wage is a missing value. So, and the final um, function, functions that I want to introduce um, are functions that instead are correspond to uh, the reshape function. And what, what we're doing with that is basically we want to bring data into a so-called tidy form, as they're called in the, the tidyverse, which means that we want to have our data set in a form that each variable, variable has its own column and each observation has its own row. And correspondingly, uh, every value has its own cell. And this might, may, may sound uh, obvious, but oftentimes you get data that is provided in different formats. Uh, so for example, if you have data where you have um, observations very often for panel data where you have data that is, in, provide, that is for multiple years. And instead of having a separate observation for each person and each year, you have one observation for each person and then you have variables for each year. In that case, we would like to take all these uh, columns that provide observations for all years and store them as each year as a separate um, as a separate row, and so we can do this using the gather function. And the other form of data that we often come across is data where um, the the variable name is basically provided in one column, and then you have basically an indicator in the column that tells you what what is the um, the variable, and then the next column provides a value for that variable. And we'll just look at an example uh, quickly. So um, gather corresponds basically to the reshape function in Stata where we move from um, the wide format to the long format. And what it does is it, what gather does is it takes the data, you provide a key which tells you what kind of new um, new variable you want to create. And then what is the, the variable that you're observing um, for which you want to have a separate observation in each row. And then columns to combine is basically which columns do you want to have that previously were separate columns, but now you want to um, have them arranged in, in rows. So let me, let's look at an example. Um, if we have, for example, a panel where we have two years and for each person, we only have one observation, so one row, but we have the observation for 1999 and 2000. Um, what we now want to do is we want to have for Elsa, we want to have uh, an observation in 1999 with this value, and then we want to have and a separate row with Elsa in uh, 2000 with this value here. And then we want to have, of course, 
an additional column that tells us in which year we actually are. So what we're doing is we use the function gather. So we also use pipe uh, to feed the data into the function. Then we say key, basically give us a new data that tells us in which year, a new column that tells us in which year we are. Value is just take the, um, take the value that was stored um, in these two columns. And then we tell uh, gather that we want to have uh, year 1999 and year 2000, these two columns that should now be um, uh, basically split up over several rows. And what this does as a result is, um, we now have ELSA, we have an additional variable called year, which tells us that we are now in 1999. And then we have only the variable um, for 1990, at value for 1999. If you would now scroll down, or we can still see it here. Uh, we now have in the year additional observations for the year 2000, where we have the value that previously was in, was in a separate column here. So this is something that um, appears where, that you might encounter very frequently that data is that data arrives in this uh, so-called wide format, and you might have to uh, transform it in this format because this is the format that you're using when you're actually running regressions. And finally, um, oftentimes it also happens that basically all the data is just, um, instead of having separate columns, you just essentially have all the data in one column, but then you have an indicator that tells you what value here, what, what this um, value stands for. So this could be, for example, here we have a bunch of wages, and then at some point you will have another observation for ELSA. Um, uh, it could be experience and then, but it's still in this, uh, in this column here, and then what, what appears in this column here will be the, the values for experience. And of course, we also want to have, so in this case, what we would like to have is we want to have a separate column for wage and a separate column for experience or whatever other variables um, might, that might later come up to uh, might later come up and basically for each person we would only like to have one observation so what we do is we use the function spread and we tell as two in which has two um two options, or the first argument that it takes is the indicator, which is the column that tells um, what, the, what is the variable that is um, stored in the, in the next column. And the second column tells us which column contains the values for which indicator tells us what this value is. And as you can see here, indicator is the one that tells us, for example, wage and later it might switch to experience and values contains the, the numeric values. And if you apply this, the result will be one observation for ELSA. Um, the wage, schooling and experience, which previous, which before were all in the values column are now stored in separate um, columns. Right.